Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. And today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss how we can write stored procedures in Snowflake. So as you know, that Snowflake is becoming a very popular cloud data warehouse nowadays. And many companies are basically using this particular cloud platform in their big data ETL pipeline. And if we consider this stored procedure, this is very helpful to automate certain tasks or to apply certain business logic or transformation logic on big data in Snowflake platform. So how to write these stored procedures? What is stored procedures? What is the advantages or key points or benefits of stored procedures? All these things I am going to discuss in my this video. So first of all, we should understand what is stored procedure, okay? So stored procedure allow you to extend Snowflake SQL by combining it with other language JavaScript so that you can include programming constructs such as branching and looping, okay? That is obviously as you know that Snowflake main language is structured query language. Along with this SQL, you can use the power of JavaScript and then write some code which is having complex business logic including branching and looping, okay? So if you don't know JavaScript, no need to worry. I will be giving you one particular common template where every time you need to put that template in your code and then you can change certain place in that code and that's it. Your stored procedure will be ready. Okay. So now let me tell you certain important points before going ahead with the template. Okay. So stored procedure in Snowflake return only one value. Although you can run select statement which is containing multiple rows and multiple columns in the result set of that select statement, you can use that inside the stored procedure. But the result, whatever you are getting as multiple rows and multiple columns out of that select statement, that result set must be used inside that stored procedure only. But when you will return, that time make sure you are returning only one single value. But suppose many times we might need to return multiple columns and multiple rows, that time how we will do for that some workaround are already available i will be discussing that after some time okay so coming to the benefits so you can combine branching looping along with sql and javascript syntax and you can make complex business logic automated okay that is always suppose certain set of sql you want to run in a sequence manner that time you can write a stored procedure, you can put all the SQL and if some business logic is there, you can put there and then call that stored procedure alone. So this kind of automation can be achieved using the stored procedure. Apart from that, error handling is also possible inside stored procedure like how we do in our programming languages. Like for Python, try except is available. For Java, try catch is available. Similarly, here also using certain syntax, you can basically handle the errors which might occur in the stored procedure, okay? Then you can create the SQL dynamically, okay? So obviously as you are getting the power of programming language, that time you can create dynamic SQL. And apart from that, one of the most important point about the stored procedure is security, okay? So owner of the stored procedure can decide who can run this procedure. And apart from those users or those roles, no one can use this stored procedure or execute this stored procedure, okay? Right? So these are some major benefits of using this stored procedure. Now let me directly go to template, okay? So this is the common code. I have taken one particular code. I will tell you where to change and I will also tell you which part will be basically common, okay? So first we are using one schema, okay? So demo DB is our database, public is our schema. Similarly, here you need to specify your own database dot schema name, whatever query you want to create this stored procedure, okay? Then these three lines, create or replace procedure, read result set, return float not null, language JavaScript, these are almost common in all the procedures. Only change will be, suppose your procedure is taking some input parameter, that time you need to specify here with the data type, okay? What is the return type you need to change if it is not float, if it is something else, you specify that, but make sure it is you are sending only one value as a return, okay? And language is JavaScript. This is also common. As this is also common. So here dollar dollar starts and here dollar dollar ends. It is kind of 
basically delimiter which is also common and inside that you have to write your code okay so basically last line will be return some value whatever you want to return okay right and always use var like how we define the variable in javascript okay so suppose i want to use or execute this particular sql string okay select salary from demo db public employee how suppose i am having one employee table and in that i want to get the salary so i will write this simple sql right so here you can write some sql which is your requirement then fair statement one equal to snowflake dot create statement same thing you have to copy paste this line will be exactly copy pasted in the same version okay snowflake dot create statement sql text my sql command my sql command is basically this sql command so this will create this statement and in the next line we are executing this statement okay so in that that that, that particular sql query will be executed using this particular command and the result set that may be multiple columns multiple rows no no issue okay that result set will be stored in this variable and then if you want you can apply certain arithmetic or some other operation on this particular result set and go on like that okay so that's what i told initially that you can use some select statement inside this stored procedure which might return multiple columns multiple rows but the result of that select statement must be used inside this stored procedure only when you will return make sure you are returning only single value okay and what i am doing here suppose one to calculate total salary okay for all the employees in the table or total salary in the employee table okay so basically i want to execute this kind of query select some salary from demo db public employee that itself will give me the result but just for demonstration purpose i have used this kind of looping so first i am extracting all the salary and then fair summation equal to zero so this is kind of acting like accumulator variable and then here we are iterating in our result set okay while result set dot next so same thing in python also in iterator we know it use the same command we use right and each time we are going row wise in this particular result set and to in a particular row if you want to extract a particular column that time you have to use this particular function get column value okay inside parenthesis either you can specify the column index which is basically starting from one or you can specify the complete column name okay so uh, summation equal to summation plus result set dot get column value one that is this particular query will be basically returning only one column which is salary so here i can write get column value one okay so because here index starts from one so make sure you are giving the index properly it is not zero based indexing like python or java okay make sure this index you are giving properly or else what you can do you can specify the column name directly inside quotation here that also i'll be showing you and then once the summation is done we are returning the summation so basically this particular code is kind of common which i'll be posting in the description box or in the comment section also so that you can copy this from there all you need to do you can change this uh, select command and that's it and then apply certain change suppose you don't require while loop you can remove this like that you can work with that okay i will be showing you branching also in my next upcoming videos so this is more or less a template and then to call a procedure you need to use call function call read result set so i am basically giving the name and i am calling that so this particular uh, code will basically return us total salary in the employee table okay so before going that so this particular part also i hope it is clear to result set dot next like let me show you how we do in python so that it will be becoming little bit familiar to if you are coming from python background suppose i am having a list a equal to 1 to 3 4 and then i am converting to that in an iterator okay iterator of a i'm creating one iterator and then here i am suppose applying next of ms so basically each time it will be keep on iterating so it is giving the first value now next time if i execute the same it is giving second value okay next time again if i execute it is giving third value and next time if again i execute then it should give the fourth value next time again if i give it will show error because after four nothing is present right so stop iteration like that it is giving right so the same way here also we are using that result set dot next okay so it will keep on going to next value until no next is remaining and then we are doing some simple arithmetic here right so let me show you in that snowflake also 
so if you go here so basically this is my demo db public employee table i can run this particular query and show you our actual data which is a small table which is containing name department and salary okay so suppose i want to execute this particular query basically select sum of salary from this particular table which is 29900 okay right and this one this result we want to get using our stored procedure as well so how our stored procedure will be so first we are using this schema and then here we are using create or replace procedure result read result set and then we are returning float if you want you can return integer also because we have seen that is integer coming anyway now here we are executing taking all the salary and creating this snowflake statement executing that getting the result set here only salary column will be coming here then we are iterating okay and using get column value in each row of res result set we are extracting the first column okay and then we are returning the summation result let me execute that here see function this one is successfully created now if i execute call read result set i'll be getting the same value basically whatever we are getting as the first query that is select sum of salary from the employee table same result see 29900 earlier also we got 29900 and as i have told you in get column value either you can specify index or you can specify what that is column name okay so as you can easily understand that when we execute this particular query the result set will be containing the column name as salary only so what i can do here get column value i can put salary okay so let me rerun this so as i have executed create or replace procedure so earlier procedure will be replaced by new one and then also if i execute call result set basically i'll be getting 29900 that means i want to show you that get column value either can take the index or can take the column name with quotation okay so this is more or less the complete generalized template for executing or creating stored procedure which is one of the most important part nowadays with respect to etl pipeline design that is snowflake stored procedure i hope you have understood the main essence if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you are not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you